Hi, everybody. Uh, this week, we are going to learn how to bow on open strings with no tube. So if you haven't practiced with a bow in a while, I would go back to the November 17th video where we introduced bowing inside of the TP tube. Okay. Do that video a couple of times and then come back here. Okay. Okay. So the first step to playing without the tube is what we call the lift set settle. <clears throat> okay, so you're going to lift the bow, you're going to set it, and I'm setting on the D string, and notice I'm close to my hand, okay, close to the frog, so not out here, okay, so lift, set, and then I'm going to settle. Now watch my elbow when I settle. Little movement in the elbow. Now what just happened? I just put a little bit of weight into the string. So if I was measuring my weight from zero to 10, right? When I set, it's about a one or a two. When I settle, it's about a six or a seven. Okay, so I'm setting weight into the string. Now, can you wiggle the string back and forth without making any sound? Okay, so if the bow moves, right? You didn't have enough, you didn't have enough set. Settle, excuse me, you didn't have enough settle. Okay, so lift, set, settle. Okay, then you're gonna just pull a down bow. And then you're gonna lift back. Lift, set, settle, pull. Now notice my bow is perpendicular to the strings, right? So it's not up here. And my elbow is nice and straight, okay? So you're going to want to do this in front of a mirror or a camera in selfie mode and watch your bow. Okay, I'm staying between the bridge and the fingerboard. My bow is staying perpendicular to the string, and my elbow is opening. So what's the major difference between playing with a tube and without a tube, right? When you have a tube, the tube keeps you between the bridge and the fingerboard. When I take away the tube, now I control where the contact point is, where the sounding point is, okay? Where the bow touches the string. So that's why I need to practice in front of a mirror so that I can watch and make sure my bow doesn't do this, right? So in front of a mirror and keep that bow nice and straight. And if it goes crooked, okay, you just have to use a different combination of wrist, shoulder, and elbow, okay? If I don't open my elbow, I come up here, right? So I have to open my elbow a little bit faster. Okay? If I don't bend my wrist, bow comes up like this. So as I come up, bow, I have to bend my wrist. Okay? So you just have to do some trial and error and some experimentation until you are able to keep the bow perpendicular to the string at all times, okay? Okay, so then I'm gonna set my metronome to 69, and I'm gonna do several of those down bows, and I'm just gonna use half notes. So lift, set, settle, ready, pull. Two, lift, set. One, two, lift, set. So I'm going to do as many down bows as it takes to play with a pleasing sound and keep my bow perpendicular to the string, okay? Now, at this point, you're probably doing some crunching, right? So let's talk about crunching. What does crunching come from? Well, crunching is produced when you have too much friction, right? And there's too much pressure between the bow and the string causes extra friction, and that's what causes crunching, okay? So friction is caused mainly by four things, okay? Number one, if you're pressing too hard, right? If I press too hard, way too much friction. Number two, if I move my bow too slow, right? So a very slow bow creates more friction, fast bow, less friction. Number three, your sounding point your contact point 
Closer to the bridge, more friction. Closer to the fingerboard, less friction. And the fourth thing that causes friction is a crooked bow. Now we've been working on straight bows a lot, so I'm gonna assume that most of you are already using a nice straight bow. Okay, so if you're crunching, is it too much weight, not enough bow speed, or are you playing too close to the bridge? And again, you just have to use trial and error and experimentation to figure out which one of those it might be and see if you can create a nice pleasing sound on all of those down bows. Okay, so once you're able to do the down bows, you do the same thing with up bows. So I'm gonna lift, set, settle at the tip. Lift, set, settle, push. Now notice when I lift, my elbow is opening just like I would if I was taking a down bow. Right, it's the same motion. So if I lift the bow, same extension of the elbow, extension of the arm. Okay, so I'm gonna do that at 69 as well with half notes. Ready, push. Lift, set. Lift, set. Lift, set. Okay, and then once you get good at the up bow, now it's time to put it together. So can you go both directions? taking out the lift. There is no lift at this point. Okay, so starting at the frog, ready, pull. And I'm being really careful. I'm watching myself here in the video. I'm being really careful about where my bow is. I'm not letting it glide up and down, okay? Okay, so once you have gotten all that, then of course you can work on your whole notes and your quarter notes. Okay, so whole notes are four counts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then you can work on quarter notes, right? One count. One, 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 one. Okay, um, just make sure you do those with a metronome so that you go uh, that specific speed, okay? Now, for your left hand this week, for your plucking assignment, we're just going to do review. We're not going to do anything new this week. So go back between pages 9 and 14 and, you know, find some songs that you really enjoy. Play those. Find some songs that maybe you weren't so good at the first time around. Try to polish those up a little bit. Next week, we're going to do our last page of plucking, which is page 15. So this week, we really want you to focus on reviewing what you've already done and working a lot on your bow now that you get to play on the string and make some beautiful music. Okay, so have fun with it. Good luck.